just wanted to bring up two points about Jesus Christ in hell. Because if you remember uh, a couple of weeks ago, I preached a sermon on seven reasons why Jesus Christ went to hell and why it was necessary for our salvation. Because if hell is the punishment for our sin, Jesus Christ would have had to go there in order to, to satisfy that punishment for justice to be done. And I just wanted to give you two other reasons because I thought these were too good to not share with you. Um, but I, first of all, I just wanted to show you Psalm 88, and we just, um, we'll just, I'll read this for you. And I just wanted you to, think, you to think of Jonah 2 at the same time as we read through this. And I really do believe that Psalm 88 is talking about uh, Jesus Christ going to hell and, and him expressing uh, his thoughts there. Um, so l listen to this psalm. O Lord God of my salvation, I have cried day and night before thee. Let my prayer come before thee. Incline thine ear unto my cry. For my soul is full of troubles, and my life draweth nigh unto the grave. I am counted with them that go down into the pit. I am as a, as a man that hath no strength. Free among the dead, like the slain that, are, that lie in the grave, whom thou rememberest no more, and they are cut off from thy hands. Doesn't that sound like hell? Thou hast laid me in the lowest pit, in darkness and in deeps. Thy wrath lieth hard upon me, and, thy, and thou hast afflicted me with all thy waves, Silas. Doesn't that right, remind you of Jonah too? Thou hast put away mine acquaintance far from me. Thou hast made me an abomination unto them. I am shut up and I cannot go forth. Mine eye mourneth by reason of affliction. Lord, I have called daily upon thee. I have stretched out my hands unto thee. Wilt thou show wonders to the dead? Shall the dead arise and praise thee, Salah? Shall thy loving kindness be declared in the grave or thy faithfulness in destruction? Anyway, when I think of that verse, I, was, uh, I can't remember who I was talking to about it, but you know, about the... The Jesus preaching to the spirits in prison and was saying a thought might be because he did go there and preach the word of God because he said a lot of these psalms probably when he was down there uh, and that's just one uh, maybe a thought on how he preached to the, to the people that were in hell when he was down there so he's saying shall thy loving kindness be declared in the grave or thy faithfulness in destruction shall thy wonders be known in the dark and thy righteousness in the land of forgetfulness but unto thee have I cried, O Lord, and in the morning shall my prayer prevent thee. Lord, why castest thou off my soul? Why, why hidest thy face from me? I am afflicted and ready to die from my youth up. While I suffer thy terrors, I am distracted. Thy fierce wrath goeth over me. Thy terrors have cut me off. They came round about me daily like water. They compassed me about together. Lover and friend hast thou put far from me and mine acquaintance into darkness. So obviously we can't build a doctrine off it. I just think it's interesting if we compare that to Jonah 2 and a lot of the points that I brought up in that sermon. Um, it's just interesting that it's almost like he's crying, this, this, David is, is preaching and he's crying from, from hell, the lowest pit, and talking about the wrath and terrors uh, on him from God. The other one as well that I missed, and, and this is a, I think a really good one too, is in Ephesians 5. The Bible says here in Ephesians 5, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love, as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savour. And I already mentioned in that sermon that you know his soul was made an offering for sin, and the Passover lamb uh, being that picture where he was burnt. But here it says here that Christ hath given himself an offering, and then it uses this phrase, a sacrifice to God, for a sweet smelling savor. Now, in the Old Testament, we don't see it as a sweet smelling savor. It actually uh, is a uh, an odor of a sweet savor. Um, but I just want to show you an example because every time uh, in the Old Testament it talks about this sweet smelling savor, it is a burnt sacrifice. It's a sacrifice that is offered by fire. And I'll just show you uh, an example here in Exodus 29:18. Here, and thou shalt burn the whole ram upon the altar. It is a burnt offering unto the Lord. It is a sweet savor, an offering made by fire unto the Lord. And if you just search in your, in, you know, your Bible software and just search sweet savor, again, all through Leviticus as well, uh, it just keeps repeating this phrase. It is a sweet savor, an offering made by fire unto the Lord. And Jesus Christ was the offering and he was a sweet smelling savor. So it's just another uh, interesting um, point there on Jesus Christ having to suffer in hell for our sins to satisfy that punishment. 